Welcome to this, the third part in our tutorial on software redundancy. Uh, if you haven't seen the first, the first two parts of it, uh, take a look. There's a description below. Um, you can go and take a look at those first and then come back. Right, where we left off last time, we'd uh, seen that the software is being updated on a regular basis by the when the master runs through its program, completes the program, and then sends the information over to the standby PLC. What you'll notice here is that the master PLC has to run through the entire program first and update the program state before the information is sent to the standby CPU, which means that the standby CPU is never completely up to date with the master PLC. It's always at least a couple of cycles behind. Uh, one, one of the other bottlenecks is this MPI connection. All this information has to go over MPI. And MPI's maximum speed is 187.5 kilobits per second, I believe. We can speed up this data transfer slightly by removing the MPI link and replacing it with a CP module on both PLCs. So we put a, a Profibus CP module on here and we connect the two CPUs by Profibus. And of course if these two CPUs are close enough together we can push up all the way up to 12 megabits per second. So which means that we can get this update a lot faster but they will still never be perfectly synchronized like a proper fully redundant two of everything S7400 series where everything is in hot standby. If one CPU fails, the other one just carries on as if nothing's happened. This, there is some change over state that, and, and so this is suited not for a hot, by, hot standby operation but for uh, a slower moving process where you need improved reliability and not, not necessarily uh, not necessarily complete redundancy. So what we have is if one CPU goes down then the other CPU can take over and continue the operation safely. If uh, one Profibus cable goes down the other CPU can take over and continue the operation safely. Let's talk a little about how this data is transferred across from one CPU to the other. In our master CPU, or in actually in both, but we'll just start on the master. In the master, it has a DB. And the DB's name in the software redundancy package, the DB's name is uh, DB underscore send underscore NO. This is, you have to reserve a DB, a complete DB for this, um, but you don't specify the size of the DB. Software redundancy will take care of the DB itself. The information in this CPU will be kept in this DB and then used to send to the standby CPU. And the other CPU has got a DB RCVNO, a receive DB. So it sends across, and then the standby CPU or the other CPU will package data into DB send NO on its own side and send that to DB RCVNO on the CPU. There needs to be some control of what's going on and the way the control happens is there's a working DB that records the process of all these transfers also all done by these two blocks and that DB's name is DB underscore work underscore NO and that keeps track of the data processing and the same DB on the other side. DB work 
Well, no. These dBs stay remain remain the same, and in your process or in your PLC, you actually don't want these to be part of the project. They are created, these three dBs, and there's two more which we'll talk about later. These dBs are created at runtime when we start up the CPU and we run SWR start. These three are created in memory in the CPU. They do not need to be in your project. They are created. The only thing you do need to do is reserve dBs. You need to, they, would, they need them. It's also possible that these two CPUs, the, the two programs and the two PLCs do not need to be identical. The only parts they need to share is this redundant hardware and the redundant program. These programs between the SWR and ZYK calls. Each CPU can be unique. So you could have a situation where the CPU has got some I.O. modules running a different part of the plant and this CPU doing um, also a different job as well. So you may, you may have like a cooling plant in the center for two two plants here and then you have some cooling system in the center where this is redundant to make sure that the cooling is always working whereas the, the two different plants are doing their own streams doing their own work which means that that IO can be different there could be other Profibus instruments tied to tied to these um, Profibus networks so these the, the, the Profibus networks themselves do not need to be identical. The only thing it must share is these, the, the, the redundant section of the program. OB1 will then call other parts of the program as well to do its own, its own work on, this, on its own I.O. and its own instruments, separate from the, um, separate from the redundant program. But now, there are cases where this CPU needs to know the state of that plant or this CPU needs to know the state of that plant. So the way to do that is we have two more dBs. We call that the CPU A and that's B. So we have a dB, dB, A to B. No. and a db db b to a no and in this cpu the same dbs we've got a db a to b no and a db b to a no This DB should uh, carry all the information that this CPU needs to tell that CPU about the state of its own non-redundant program. And this CPU needs to have, this DB needs to have all the information that this CPU needs to tell that CPU about its state of its non-redundant program. Now, whereas these two are, op are opposite, so you're your send is sent to your receive, and your send is sent to your receive. These are one to one. So this data will always go from A to B in one direction, and this data will always go from B to A in one direction. When the PLCs change over, we do not get the change of direction of these. These two are immutable, that's the direction they are and always. These two are different, but these five dBs, that the, the work dB, the send dB, the receive dB, and the dB A to B and B to A are all generated on startup by the software redundancy start in both PLCs. They only need to be reserved 
and do not to be, do not need to be in your project. I'll explain in the next video how I set up these, but they um, they are only in memory. They don't need to be part of your project. I think we'll stop it here, and we'll continue in the next in the next clip.